Well, if you've listened to me for any given length of time, you know, one of the things I am uh, most fond of saying is that your lucky number can be two if you're able to get your hands into that steaming pile of garden goodness that is known as zoo do over at the woodland park zoo it's a popular thing uh, a couple of times a year a lot more of it now these days we'll talk about that in a minute and we are joined by the princess of poo the gm of bm dr do herself Liv johansson Liv, thanks for for joining us i really appreciate that and uh, the first thing i want to ask you is what is it about zoo do that makes it so good to put in your garden? There are a lot of things about Zudu that make it so good to put in your garden. I'll start with the basics of compost. So compost, um, more or less of all kinds, is an incredible amendment to your garden. Compost comes full of nutrients that plants need to thrive. Uh, it comes with its own unique microbial community that kind of has beneficial um, symbiosis with the organisms that already live in the soils. It retains water, it's cooling to the plants in the summer and insulating to them in the winter. So the benefits of compost are myriad and I could go on forever telling you about them. But one of the things that makes Zudu so unique uh, is that it is an animal manure based compost product. So uh, you get great texture, kind of nice, moist, clumpy texture. Um, it's odor free, I assure you, it is a fully mature, fully stable compost. It's ready for application on anything edible and ornamental. Uh, and it's got a lot of nitrogen in it that is really available for plants and they love that. Excellent. Now let's talk about if we can, the animals that it comes from, because as I understand it, it's the non primates and they're all vegetarians. Why those animals? So at this point, that's what we're working with. So Zudu has been, been made on site here at the zoo for coming on 40 years. So we've had a lot of different changes to the animals that call the zoo home. Uh, and with that, the Zudu program has changed in turn as well. So right now um, we take all the manures from our herbivores, um, except for the animals that are in, in um, our animal health quarantine building for any reason, and uh, the beddings from most our critters here. So that is not exclusive to herbivores. We also take bedding from some of our cats, our bears, et cetera. Um, and right now that's where we're at more for an operational logistical standpoint. It's easier to collect those manures at this point, but we're hoping to to sort of expand in the future and and go where most zoos don't while maintaining the quality and safety of our product. So in other words, in the future, we might see some of this from the meat eaters. Yeah, it's entirely possible. And it's a really exciting opportunity to just continue to make great compost, to sequester those carbon emissions and to have more product available for people. But like I said, safety and quality are of the highest priority to us. So nothing will change without folks being aware, being involved in the conversation uh, and being allowed to uh, give their feedback to us. Now, you also touched on it a little bit one of the things that that sticks out to me as most important about the creation of zoo and again multiple times a year is the idea of not only sustainability but reducing waste so i'm hoping you'll talk about that a little bit i'm happy to talk about that so manure and bedding uh they are uh organic in nature meaning you know they were once living and we like to think that they'll live another life again in someone's garden or um, on agricultural crops. So, you know, our, we live in a, in a jurisdiction in the city of Seattle and King County in the state of Washington doing incredible things, advocating for waste minimization um, and diversion of materials from landfill. And, and compost is one of the most important ways that that gets done. And so on site here, we'd be paying an incredible amount of money uh, to send our materials off site. So that would be sort of financially wasteful, but it would also be wasteful because you'd be, you know, you'd be landfilling those, those nutrients that we can, that we can keep on site and sort of keep in our gardening community. So that circle of life is really crucial. And uh, it's a great addition to the messaging that comes out of the zoo. I mean, conservation is, is an incredible goal and waste reduction is one of the best ways that you can help achieve it. Indeed. Now, I'm also hoping you'll talk a little bit about the process because 
I sort of, it gets hot originally in the pile. So it's, you're kind of cooking it. Tell me a little bit about how you actually make this stuff. Oh yeah, this is my favorite part of the conversation. So basically our machine operators go around in a little skid steer, a front loader and a dump truck, and they collect all those materials on a weekly and daily basis. We mix them all together. So we give them um, a nice thorough mix in a mixer truck that we have that just makes sure that the particle sizes are prime for decomposition. And then we, we pile all those materials up, we wet them down, uh, moisture is a really important component in compost. And then we sort of tuck them into bed. So we cover them with an insulated tarp um, just to keep all that heat in and make sure that there, there isn't anything getting into the piles that we don't want. Uh, and then we have this really incredible system that was provided to us by a company called ECS, Engineered Compost Systems. And what it does is we have trenches that run on the floor and that helps force oxygen up into the piles to make sure that there's sort of an even um, balance of oxygen and air and moisture throughout the piles. And you are right, things get hot. So just, just providing the optimal conditions for compost to happen, so it's wet enough, it's oxygenated enough, it's insulated, we really easily achieve temperatures of north of 65 degrees Celsius for up to 30 days, which is really, really hot by standards of compost. But it is all that carbon and the nitrogen from the beddings and the manures, just kind of kind of coalescing with the best conditions we can give them. And, and all that is what helps to ensure that any material that we end up putting in the those compost piles, be it herbivore, carnivore manures, are safe and sanitized and, like I said, ready for use on ornamental or agricultural crops. Now, I remember the days when this only happened a couple of times a year and you actually had to get into a lottery to be able to get some of this stuff, but that's changed and you're able to make more. What's different now? Oh yeah, so that system that I mentioned, that um, ECS system that allows us to oxygenate our piles, that helps make compost faster. So that's that's pretty big. So we're able to move our material through the yard a little more quickly while maintaining quality. Uh, we also just, uh, we have the technology to, we don't really need to do the lottery anymore. It's easy for people to just sign up on the website. Uh, we have those tools available and it seems like people really like it. I've gotten nothing but good feedback. I think folks used to be really bummed when they were getting ready to garden and then they couldn't get the zuby they wanted, but now they have that consistency to know that it's there. And so it's really not a problem. Pretty much anybody who wants to get some is able to do so. With the caveat that it's first come, first serve. So we don't have an endless supply, though we have a lot more than we have in years past. So um, the website zoo.org forward slash zoo is where our links live uh, to sign up for those sales. The sale that's happening this weekend, uh, that'd be the 8th and the 9th, is fully sold out. Folks, I'm sorry about that. But the sale that's happening on April 29th and 30th does still have some availability. And then depending on how much material we have left after that April sale, we'll probably host another one uh, in the summer, if not the end of June, then perhaps early July. So again, all that will be on zoo.org forward slash zoo and of course, I believe you can still always get the small containers at the zoo gift shops most of the most of the time. Yeah, excellent point. Thanks for bringing that up. So at the zoo store, we do have two gallon buckets of Zoodoo, four gallon buckets of Zoodoo, and then little pint cups. So if you've got some indoor plants, you can uh, add some pint a pint of Zoodoo in there. Um, Zoodoo or worm do. And worm do is just we we sort of take our compost and we feed it to some red worms to give it a little extra and uh, to be a little more nourishing in small doses to little plants. I like it. And the thing that surprised me too, because I did a little reading beforehand, is I don't remember people being able to come and get it by the truckload. So that's pretty amazing that you can just get a massive truck bed full of this stuff. Oh yeah, you bet. And uh, some folks will come multiple times in a weekend. They're that excited about it, but it's a workout. Indeed. So will you remind us, Liv, one more time where folks can get information about Zoodoo? Absolutely. Uh, the best way is the website, zoo.org forward slash Zoodoo, Z-O-O-D-O-O. -O -O -O. Uh, or you can call us at 206-625-POOP. 
<laughs> the classic number still around. Wonderful. Yeah, we're not doing anything with that. Why? No. Why would you give that up? Absolutely. <laughs> Liv Johansson, Dr. Do from the Woodland Park Zoo. Thanks, Liv. Really appreciate that. Such a pleasure, Ryan. Thank you.